Welcome back to Nerds of the Side of Fries. Today, we explain Assassin's Creed. The first game. I will be doing all the games leading up to Mirage. But I'll probably finish doing all this in like a month. And then Mirage will still not be out. <laughs> well, you're going to do all the games? Yeah. Okay. So this uh, is just the first one. Side games I might include into a, a presentation with the game they came out with. Okay. For example, Assassin's Creed 3 will probably have the story of Assassin's Creed Liberty put into it. Okay. To make it easier. All right. Um. Assassin's Creed Theme Matters by Ahmed the Amelianth. Now, Theme Matters. Theme. You ever remember me? You ever oh, remember, theme. Okay, sorry. You ever remember in um, school when they taught you theme mm-hmm. in writing class, in English class? Yeah. How it's the lesson of the story? Uh huh. I feel, for me, this you may disagree on this opinion and anyone else can too, the reason the newest Assassin's Creed games haven't been so successful, they have no theme. I agree with you. They've been missing that in the story. The mm-hmm. theme is never there. It's just hunt down the call, do this, do that, do that. Yeah. Now, we are bringing it back to the OG, whose theme was actually not as obvious as it was now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Clear a little bit of history. Everyone knows the history of Assassin's Creed 1. It was supposed to be a Prince of Persia spinoff, but they were like, screw that. We'll just make this new game about assassins. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Now, starting off, mm-hmm. Animus. The one search history you can't delete (laughs) (laughs) because it is your DNA. Now, in the Assassin's Creed universe, Mm -hmm. your DNA doesn't just have your memories. It has the memories of your ancestors. So, for example, say our ancestor was some guy named Tom. Mm -hmm. We'd be able to see his life through through our DNA through this machine. Okay. There's a whole bunch of more components to it, but that's the main gist of it. Yeah. You can't delete this history. Okay. Now... The bleeding effect is a thing that happens to certain people in the Animus, and it's overlapping memories. So, okay. say we were looking at Tom's memories from our ancestry, uh-huh. and our memories started to get mixed up with his. Mm-hmm. That's the bleeding effect. Also, we'd any skills that Tom would have gotten, for example, in this world, the main skill you get as the person, the main story person, uh-huh. is eagle vision. Right. Say Tom had that, we would acquire ego vision that way. It's a quick oh. way of learning th- skills through memories instead of actually practicing it back in a million oh, times. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. Okay. Now, moving on from that, we're starting off with our character, Desmond Miles. Present day character. Uh, he's a bartender by night and assassin no more. So, a little bit of backstory on Desmond Miles, you don't find out till later. Desmond was actually born into the assassins. Okay. You might be wondering, what are our senses? That will be explained later. Okay. But he left that life and became a bartender because he no longer wanted to be a part of that. Desmond Miles uh, noticed the lip scar. Uh Never explained where he got it. But he's a bartender. He's been kidnapped by a company named Stergo to go into his memories. Oh, but this is in real life. He was born into the assassins in his life. And then he. Yes, but he quit the assassins or just left the life. But what was the assassins like in the modern day? Explained later. Okay, okay. The point is, he's kidnapped by this company named Abstergo uh-huh. to go into his memories of one of his ancestors because the ancestor found something they want. Okay. He doesn't know what it is. They don't tell him what it is. They don't even tell him what he's doing there. He's, I just know this because I played the game. Okay. But that's the thing. Desmond Miles, reluctant leader or reluctant character, kidnapped. Can And in this room, he can. there's only the animus in the center of the room. Mm-hmm. There's two people with him who we, I will tell you who they are later. And then his little room that has cameras and all that in it. Okay. All right. Now, Miles is taken by Abstergo. And if you're wondering, this lady is a character I will explain later. So the guy in the lab coat, the guys in the suits in the back, not going to be able to explain that. <laughs> okay. Think of it as corporate. All right. But this is the room's layout in the way. The animus is that little center thing, mm-hmm. right? And then, you know, nice little furniture for some reason. But this is the room they have him in, along with another side room that's his room. Okay. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Starting off, Warren Vidic, main bad guy. His, uh, he's a doctor who runs Abstergo. Okay. And if you're wondering, what's Abstergo? It's basically a big pharmaceutical company that like evil not evil but like yeah. they 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 make TVs, washers, medicine, all that so they're a big uh-huh. company that have a lot of money. Their newest thing is the Animus but they haven't announced that to the world. Oh okay okay. And they took Miles, kidnapped him to go through his memories to find something. We don't know what yet. Okay. Any questions so far? No, I'm good. Intern hasn't even been paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> now, Lucy Stillman, main boo thing. That's her face main right boo there. Thing? 
<laughs> What's her name? Um, Lucy Stillman. No, but the actress for her. Um, I have no clue. Mm-hmm. What's her name? Intern, what's her name? Kristen Bell. Yeah. Look at her face. She was inspired off Kristen Bell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's Anna from Frozen. <laughs> yeah, yes. it's Anna from Frozen. <laughs> but she is like a main expert or a technician of the Animus. She didn't make it, but she's she knows how it works and stuff. Okay. Um, Warren is just a very smart doctor who also knows how it works. Okay. They're the ones that are like leading your sessions. These are all in sessions to dive into the memories of the character you're going to meet right now. Okay. Now, Lucy is a little more like cons- like not conservative, but like cautionary about letting you stay in there too long. Warren wants to stick you in the machine and get through it all in one second. Oh, okay. Now, in the Holy Land. Wait, did you write main boot thing on there? Yes, I wrote the main boot thing. <laughs> main boot thing. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, we go back to the Third Crusade, eleven ninety one, in the Holy Land, aka Whoa. Jerusalem. Uh-huh. I, I, it shows right now the places. Okay. I can't pronounce it all, so my pronunciation of names and everything else will be very wrong. And if you're offended, I am sorry. <laughs> I have no way to. I yeah. tried to memorize this. It's the, a dyslexia in us. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and also these are all like Middle Eastern names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, but we go back to the Third Crusade: Templars versus Muslims. I think I don't know what religious thing was going on at this time, but it was the mm-hmm. fight for Jerusalem. Okay, the Holy Land. All right, we are Altair Eben La Aha. Wow, Lahad. you got it right though. Well, dude, that iconic name. <laughs> we play as him now. He is an assassin, full through and through. Uh-huh. And technically, he is a high-ranking assassin. When we start, we start off the story. We're entering this mission to mm-hmm. unco- We're in this temple to uncover some secret Templar treasure. We literally call it that Templar treasure. Okay. And he's there with two other assassins. First thing we do walking in, we kill an old man. Oh. And okay. yeah, he kills an old man and he gets called out for it. And okay. there's more to that. But okay. that's how we're starting off. Consider him very arrogant mm-hmm. and very much uh, d- d- as long as I get the job done, it does not matter how I get it done. And I am too. I am superior to all you little scrums because I'm a high ranking assassin. OK. Very arrogant. Yeah. Starting off, we have the master assassin Al Malim. Okay. He is the headmaster of the assassins. OK. He is. That's it. He's your mentor. Okay. <laughs> we have Robert Del Saab. He is the leader of the Templars. Isn't it Desable? Nope. De Saab. De Saab. De Saab. De Saab. Robert De Saab. De Saab. But there's the two. No. Nope. Do. I know that's how you spell it, but it's De pronounced De Saab. Saab. Okay. Think I'm of sorry. it back <laughs> in the English. Don't you come at me, intern. What did she say? She just keeps going. <laughs> 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 I know it says Sable, <laughs> but they do not pronounce it that way. Okay, so Saab, what did you say, Sable? Robert de Saab. De Saab, okay. Right? Now, the Creed of the Assassins. This is the main thing you break. Altair breaks the three creeds. Don't read them. I'm going to explain them all right okay. now. <laughs> and he gets in trouble for it. One, stay your blood from the flesh of an innocent. Don't kill innocents. He killed an innocent old man just because he was in the way. Uh-huh. Two, never draw attention to oneself when possible. When he goes into that ca- into that Templar treasure cave, mm-hmm. he finds Robert Desab and straight up walks up to him. Okay. And like, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed <laughs> to you use the shadows. Okay. Last one. <laughs> never compromise the brotherhood. Now, okay. in the cave, he got separated from his two other friends because of a cave fall in. Mm-hmm. And he got, he got thrown one way and his friends got stuck in the room with the Templars. Okay. And he ran away. Yeah. And just came straight back to the main base Uh and brought back Templars. (laughs) They followed him. Okay. And P.S. There's this other one that's not basically a creed, but it's something they always say. Nothing is true. Everything is permitted. Uh Uh-huh. Which is something I will explain later. Maybe. Actually, I could explain it right now. (laughs) The idea is no law is actually true. Everything is permitted. When you think about it, like philosophically. Yeah. (laughs) It's the idea that. Yeah, you know it's not a good idea to kill your mom, right? It's but you can still do it. But you shouldn't. But you shouldn't. But you don't. But there's no rule that says that. You just know you shouldn't. Well, there's a rule. But in, you can in, do in it. The police. It's the idea yeah. of you have free will. Uh huh. But you shouldn't do it. But you shouldn't do it. This they use as in laws are set in the way they are, but they're not real. It's all something we have built around our society. Okay. It is the yeah. idea that laws are laws, but you don't have to follow them. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then everything is permitted is reality. Everything is permitted. I could go down the street right now and shoot people. Yeah. Am I going to? No, because I choose not to. Yeah, yeah, okay. They just say that to themselves so they're okay with killing and doing the stuff they do uh, as assassins. Okay. okay. I, I made a horrible example. <laughs> now, first off, you die. What? As your punishment for breaking the three creeds, you get stabbed. And this is the beginning of the game? This is the beginning of the game. You break all the rules and you die. And you get stabbed by Amalim. Okay. Literally in this scene you see in the background, uh-huh. you're being held back by two guys and he stabs you with a knife. Okay. JK, you start over. What the fuck? <laughs> no, he stabs you, but you still live. Mm-hmm. And you have to, and he tells you, you're living only because I say you can, but you have to redeem yourself. Oh, you have okay. to, one, you're starting off at zero rank. All your equipment has been taken away from you, and you are starting off as a novice. Oh. Because you need to learn, relearn everything so you won't be so goddamn arrogant. Wow, that's a good way to start a story. Yes. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about that little sphere thing in front of him. <laughs> I was, but yeah. And one of the there's more to the story, but I'm skipping over it. But yeah, okay. now you learn three skills right away: eavesdropping, pit pocketing, and violence. Now okay. you must be asking what when you give you're given targets mm-hmm. in the game, you don't get like oh they're here, go get them. Yeah, you have to one go to the city they're at and go to a viewpoint, which is like their way of scouting out the whole area. Uh And then from there, you have to eavesdrop on conversations. Uh You have to pit pocket people's messages and you have to beat information out of people so you can find your target. Yeah. So that's what the gameplay was. It wasn't just here's the location. Go kill that guy. No, no, no. It was you have to find it yourself. When I first played this game, I did. I stopped playing it because I didn't know what to do next. And it was because I haven't I wasn't doing viewpoints. I was just trying to find the next guy to kill. But there was no way for me to do it. Yeah, and they walk you through the like the first kill. They walk you through it completely, and after that, you have to figure it out, oh. which was an interesting thing to do at the time. Yeah. Okay, so that's the three main things you learn right away, because when the Templars came, uh-huh. they attacked the city fully, but you guys were able to the assassins were able to push them back, uh-huh. and all that, and then Al Mulim tells you go and find the traitor who let them into the city, because someone let them into the city. Oh, and okay. then it ended up being some basket weaver. Oh, okay. And we now move on to the main locations of the game. There's four main cities. Starting off, Damascus. Damas. Okay. Damascus. Nope, don't don't say the kiss. It's just Damas. Trust what? Me. It's Damas. Okay. Dem- <laughs> Sounds like you're saying Damas. Nope, Damas. <laughs> okay. Damas is, I don't know. Then you got Akar. Akar, okay. Yeah. Jerusalem. Uh-huh. Masyaf. Okay. I thought you said you couldn't pronounce them. You just did. The names. Exa- oh, the names of the characters. Name characters. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Intern is talking over Intern? there. <laughs> you got something to say, say it, dog. <laughs> What'd she say? I ain't going to say nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Come over here and say something. But her face says it all, though. Yeah, exactly. That's why. <laughs> just say it. Just, just break. Oh, she's getting the Google okay. Translate? <laughs> That's Google. The game obviously doesn't say it the same way, do they? Okay, Google <laughs> says it like that. The game doesn't. She's taking all the stops on if, you. Okay, here's the thing. And okay. this is actually thought. You must be wondering, why Why is everyone... like? Even They even have explanation on why everyone's talking in English and not in whatever language they were speaking back then. Uh-huh. The animus translate it, translates it for uh, the character. Okay. So what you're calling me out for is something they did. So <laughs> next time you want to come after someone, in turn, <laughs> play the game yourself. I... Miss, I'll only play the Switch. <laughs> and I'll only play Lego Harry Potter. Oh, my God. I'll see your ass outside, too. All right, mm. all right. Next, oh, you clicked it. Oh. <laughs> Spoiler. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. And the first one you go to, I believe, is Jerusalem. Okay. And you find Tamir. <laughs> Tamir. Tamir. Weapons dealer. Okay. He's being very cruel. You kill him. And, oh, my God, I forgot. He <laughs> he tells you, because every time you kill someone, you get this one-on-one moment where they tell you a little bit of what they're doing if they want to, or they talk back to you and tell you you're an idiot. Okay. He says, you fool, I was just a cog in the machine, and I was just looking for the opportunity because he's a weapons dealer. He just wanted to sell weapons. Uh-huh. And remember, at this time, there's a war going on between King Arthur III, I'll show it later, mm-hmm. and some king. 
Okay. But it was just uh, those two kingdoms fighting over Jerusalem. And in this story, Jerusalem and um, Masyaf. No, just Jerusalem is um, part of the Salt, whoever. Solstice? No, no, no. The other religion. <laughs> That's wrong. It was the Christians and the, was it Muslims? I don't in know. the third crusade intern <laughs> <laughs> never mind <laughs> okay damascus and ark arkar arka ark. is it did you say ark ark i said Ars? ark but it's not it's not that it's ark ark arka arkar but there's no a there's an a car oh it's not ar- acre <laughs> but you're sitting at you're making it sound like there's an a at the end uh, my bad ark Wait, no. A car. A car? Okay. A car. Okay, okay. A car. Okay, okay. A car <laughs> and Damascus is being is being is run by the Catholics or the Christians. A car. A car. Okay, okay. Is run by the Christians and so is Damascus. Jerusalem is run by the other religion that I do not know, but I know it's the one that has um he has a sultan. Or what's that? The or isn't it the Romans no. during that time? No. No? No. Well that's the whole like Third Crusade, guys. I'll I I got a presentation for the leaders. I'll show it later. Okay. Okay. You're asking the wrong people. <laughs> okay. You kill Tamir. He uh-huh. tells you he's just <laughs> he's just trying to get money and power off of the war and that he's just a cog in a much bigger machine and his death does not matter. Okay. Oh, and also, as you're doing this, Al Malim gives you nine names that you have to hunt down. Or it tells you you have to kill nine people and he doesn't tell you who they are. Okay. It's just your job. Next one. We have, oh jeez, <laughs> Granada de Napoles. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, he's he's on the Christian side. Mm-hmm. He's a herbarist. Mm-hmm. Now, not actually a herbarist. He's just a guy who likes to torture people. He's literally running a mental hospital. Yeah, he looks like a butcher with a cross. Yeah, he's running a mental hospital and drugging people to see if he can cure them. Um. Now, here's the thing: we don't know this, or it's not said yet, but he's only taking people that are homeless, criminals. Or people that have no point in society. Okay. Okay. Is it true or? It's true. He's only picking up people oh, okay. that had no homes and such. Okay. When you kill him, you literally say you were taking pe- you. Uh, Altair says you were taking people from their homes and putting them in torture chambers because he was torturing them. Mm-hmm. And the guy says, "No, they didn't have homes, mm-hmm. and I'm not torturing them. I'm trying to get them better so they stop doing whatever they were doing, like drugs or whatever." Okay. This is trying to cure like the homeless problem. But you have to kill him. You have to kill him. Why? It'll be all explained. Okay. Next guy. Human, Human trafficker Tala. Okay. I probably said that wrong. Huh. I do not care. <laughs> it sounds right. He was the guy giving the people to Granada de Napolis, the herborist. Oh, okay. From the last slide. Uh-huh. So you figure out. He picks up the people. Mm-hmm. He drugs them and cures them of their drugs, apparently. Yeah, yeah. He gives them weapons. Ah. And then they okay, all okay. join the crusades. Okay. So they're feed, they're give, they're making soldiers oh, okay. out of the people that are being useless. But then you're just like, okay, but there's something more to this. Mm, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Next, yeah, then you kill these three, and each time you go back to Amalim, and he, he you start to like, Altair is not going against Amalim. He's just like, I'm feeling weird about killing these people. They aren't doing anything technically bad. They're just the way they're doing it is wrong. Yeah. The way they're doing things is wrong, but what they're achieving isn't bad. Uh huh. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's like the idea that you have to make an omelet, you have to crack the eggs. Yeah, yeah. Now, we have King Richard, who's the Christian side in the Third Crusade, and I am not going to try to say that name. Uh, the Sultan. Ayyubid Sultan Saladin. Saladin. He's the one that's Saladin. on the other side of the Crusade. Okay. There is no image of him in the game, so I picked that image. This oh. is the King Richard from the game. Why isn't there no image of the other guy? You don't really... I think you might have met him, but there's no clear image is what I'm saying. Oh, okay, okay. Remember, these are PlayStation 2 graphics. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So these are the two sides of the war. Uh-huh. I feel like I was supposed to be explaining more to this. Now, the thing about the war going on is each one of them had... You just killed a person of their side. Yeah. On Technically, uh-huh. two on the Sultan and then one on King Richard. Uh-huh. All right? Yeah. And you still got six more to go. Okay. Next, we have... Oh, you go back to Amalim. <laughs> <laughs> and he tells you that the cities that you went to, the three cities, mm-hmm. have fake leaders because the main leaders went to war. Okay. So now these guys have taken their place, starting off with Majid Adin. 
Okay. I have no know if I said that right. He's the <laughs> regent of Jerusalem. Okay. He's taken charge even though he's not actually a part of the throne. Okay. It's people that have taken charge of their place but forcefully. Isn't that just like law? Well, no. It's like, hey, our king of this city. Oh, the king never put them in, the in king, charge? Technically, no. They're just figureheads. Oh. While the main guy who's in charge of the city left to go to the war with the king. Oh, okay, okay. So they're taking their place in power and doing whatever they want. Oh, okay, okay. I forget what this guy's doing, but he's just regent of Jerusalem. Okay. And he's trying to make... He's more like a religious... Very religious guy trying to make it mostly... I don't know what's... I think he's Muslim. Mm -hmm. I don't know what religion these guys were technically, and it's never mentioned. Yeah. So I'm not going to bring religion, okay? He was trying to make it in Jerusalem a pure non-Christian place, based on what I think. Yeah. Next guy we have, the richest man in Damascus, Abu Nabi... Yeah, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Abu Nakud. 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 As you can tell from his face. <laughs> <laughs> Albu. He's, Just call him Abu. He's very ugly and very fat. Yeah, richest. But he's the richest richest man in Damascus putting him in charge. Mm -hmm. And then you kill and then remember you're still killing these guys and they still have their one on one moments. Yeah. And the and the first guy was like I was bringing I was bringing faith back to the people and putting like, you know, making them correct. This guy mm -hmm. flips that coin hard and in a banquet he's hosting spreads gas somehow into the crowd and kills a whole bunch of people wow and then when you kill him he's like these guys were just sucking the city dry while i was when i was away when before so I everyone you're everyone that's on the list for you to kill is like in a way kind of doing good in a way kind of doing good but the means of which they're doing it yeah it's not good it's not good okay killing a whole bunch of people that were being kind of greedy sure that's yeah, there's uh, other like ways to go about thing, the, but the dude, other, you kind of took it too far the other ways to go yeah yeah next one we have this is when the Templars and the Assassins are brought up. Okay. Because you, you, you kill these two and you go back to Amalim and you're like, these, this is not making sense. How are these all connected? Who are all these people? Why am I killing all of these guys? Yeah. Altair says that to Amalim and he's like, because they are Templars. Ah. They are all Templars. Okay. And the Templars um, are following this philosophical idea of... The world can be perfect as long as we can mold the people into perfect people. Oh, okay. So it's endless war here. Yeah, it's an endless war that goes throughout ages. No matter who, like, say Russia went down, the assassins and the Templars would still somehow be fighting. Okay. It's not about nations. It's not about anything. It's about the ideals. Oh, okay, okay. One wants to rule the world, Templars. The other wants to free it. The it's the basic, most basic way I can put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Templars... And assassins have the same goal, peace. And mm -hmm. a, a world where peace and there's no crime. It's like a perfect world, right? Yeah. The thing about it is the Templars want to mold the people into that. Mm -hmm. They want to take your ass, make you an effective person, and human, a human decent person, mm -hmm. whether that means breaking you, changing your personality, whatever, controlling you, yeah. and then put you into the world as a perfect being to perfectly help society. Okay. The okay. assassins... Just want you to come to the understanding of that on your own without them having to do anything or hurt you. Yeah. They just want you to understand the world as it is on its own and yeah. that you have the free will to do that. Yeah. Then you don't have to hurt people. Yeah. So same goal of peace. It's just the way they do things is horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Assassins okay. are a little more kind hearted and the Templars will smack the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's what this whole thing is. Mm hmm. Next guy, William de Mafret. I don't know if I said that right. Monfrit. Monfrer. Monferrat. Monferrat. I think. <laughs> he's the Lord of Akka. Okay. Now. He's at war. He, no, he's not. He's oh, okay. in charge of Akkar. Okay. Here's an interesting thing. When you go and visit, find him in the city, King Richard is visiting. Okay. And he talks shit to him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And when that's when you, when you start eavesdropping and finding out about what's going on. Mm -hmm. He is only Lord of Akkar because his son and the king don't get along. And the king is keeping him at Akkar okay. so that the son doesn't get out of line. Okay. So he's a political prisoner that's also taking control of the city. Okay. Wow. Politics are still going on in this world. Yeah. And then you kill him. Okay. So remember, you've killed people on both sides of the war. Okay. Important thing you remember that. Uh -huh. He's number six. Yeah. Now, we go back to the present. <laughs> yeah. 
because you do all that. Or actually, there might have been another time you get pulled Wait, out. Wait, what the fuck is going on with your wrist? That was just a glitch. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's the picture I picked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Besides funny. the point. Yeah, yeah, sorry. You go back to the present and Lucy's like, he's been in there too long. It's dangerous. We're going to pull him out and give him a little bit of break. It's like when you've been on a computer for too long. Yeah. And Warren is like, no, no, no. We, got, we, we have a timeline. We have to finish this in a week. We can't. And then she's like, let's talk in the other in the other room. Let's him let him get some rest. Mm-hmm. And Warren's just still like, fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> now. We find out that Abstergo is actually the new modern day Templars. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. So the Templars aren't per se winning, but they're rich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the person who tells us all this is Lucy. But it, like, is she like this? She's not. She's just she's, she's working she's for just, the Templars. She just worked. But it's like she's not like a full Templar. Unknown. You oh, don't okay. know that. Okay, okay, okay. But the point is, Abstergo is the Templars. Okay, okay. And Lucy tells you that. And she's like, yeah, you know that war your ancestors fought? It's still going on. <laughs> it's <Wow>. not over. <laughs> Yes. Next thing. We go back into the machine. <laughs> Warren literally walks in, is like when he Desmond goes to sleep, right? Mm-hmm. You, Desmond wakes up and Warren's just standing over him like, it's time to get back to work. <laughs> Damn. Creepy as fuck. And you're sent back to the past. Okay. That's when you finally understand. You go to Amwa Lim and, he tells, and, you, and you ask him for more questions. What was this all about? Why are the Templars and the Assassins at war? What is this all about? Mm-hmm. It's for this thing. The uh, the piece of Eden, aka the apple. It's literally that sapphiric thing. There's three of them in the background. Okay. It's just different angles. Uh-huh. Maybe maybe there is more than one. This item can control people. Uh-huh. Literally. Okay. Literally through illusions can control people. Uh-huh. Almulim describes it as. It's what can make, mu- um, one man split a sea. It can make. One man make like moths attack a city. It can make a simple carpenter into a man that can change water to wine. Oh, so okay. he's saying this thing is responsible for every religious significant thing that's happened <laughs> in Christianity. Wow, okay, <laughs> <laughs> like okay. Moses splitting the sea, apple. Okay, but the thing is, the apple works on illusion, so he didn't actually split the sea, he just made it look like he split the sea. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And it can control people and can also make you go mad. If mm-hmm. like, and it all goes back to, nope, sorry, not yet. <laughs> it all goes back to something that I can't bring up yet. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. But it explains where the piece of eating came from. I might not be, I might not even be able to go into it until this next game. Oh shit. All right. <laughs> 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 and he explains to you that it's f- the, the Templar treasure is this thing, the apple. They call it the apple. That's the Templar treasure. It's not a Templar treasure, but they that's what you took from the Templars in the beginning of the game. Remember that tomb you went into? Uh-huh. It was to get this. But you didn't get it. No. Oh, okay. Because this is I forgot to mention this or I just didn't want to say it till now. Uh-huh. The reason they knew that Altair had broken all three of the creeds was because one guy that you had gone with in the first mission, one uh-huh. of the guys, survived fighting the Templars, got the treasure and got out. Oh. And came back without an arm <laughs> but we, so we did steal the piece of we eden. didn't do it another guy did no exactly but so the the, the assassins, assassins have the piece of eden they have it it's just one it's just one apple uh, okay 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 now you said you can't tell me where they come from not yet okay okay because it's not revealed in this game all right all right <laughs> or it kind of is i can maybe <gasps> no just move on so you don't have to spoil everything now. No, I'm just thinking, did I add that slide in or not? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. It. Oh, I hope I did. <laughs> okay. The Peace of Eden. Remember that. Yeah. Artifact that somehow controls people through illusions, but can also make people who wield it go mad. Okay. For example, um, Almolin holds it in front of you, uh-huh. and he like gestures it for you to touch it, and you touch it, and nothing happens. Okay. Just important you remember that okay. <laughs> next thing you go and kill sabram sabrand 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 he was going to build if i'm correct it was him was going to build a a water blockade of ships to block reinforcements for king richard mm-hmm. and you're thinking why would he block reinforcements for his own king mm-hmm. explained later <laughs> oh my god <laughs> 
Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but you're killing all these guys and ruining the Templar's plan, just so you know. So, so, oh, so he's the seventh one you killed. He's the seventh one. Two okay. more to go. Next one. Jabbar. Jabbar. <laughs> Jabbar was burning books. Oh, of who? The Templars. Every book. Oh. It was book burning. Okay. He was like, "You listen to the to these words as if they're the correct thing of life, so like the Bible or yeah, the yeah, Quran, the Quran, yeah. I think it's called." Uh huh. He's uh, he's burning them on saying, "You listen to the words from old people like if they're the correct thing to listen to instead mm-hmm. of what's real in the world." If I wrote on a book, "You're a dumbass," are you a dumbass? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there's this giant pile of books burning in front of him, mm-hmm. and some guy keeps telling him, "You can't burn these books. You can't burn these books." He's like, "If you love them so much, join them and throws them in the fire." Wow. <laughs> All right. So yeah, really not a great guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next. Okay. Robert de Saab. JK, it's actually a girl named Maria. <laughs> what? Number ninth was going to be Robert. What? The ninth The ninth guy is Robert. He's the ninth guy. He would be the last who, guy you who, kill. Who was he again? Robert de Saab, leader of the Templars. Oh, right. Okay, okay. Right? Uh-huh. But when you go to kill him, he's going to a funeral of someone. You actually find Maria. Who's Maria? <laughs> Just some random chick. She's a Templar. So he was using a stand-in. He was using a stand-in. And when Altair finds her and is about to kill her, he's like, I won't. You're not my target. I won't uh, kill you. Yeah. Plot twist. There's more to this. So he doesn't mm-hmm. kill her. He does not kill her. Okay. And just to be clear, um, in Assassin's Creed Revelations, mm-hmm. there's this thing where we dive back into Altair's memories. Yeah. She comes back. Oh. Not like that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Nasty. Damn it. But yeah, Maria. Okay, Maria. Yep. And she tells him, We've we you've already ruined our plans for us Templars. So we made up a new plan. Of course. And we've just I was just here as a distraction. Robert oh. de Saab is now going to King Richard and the Sultan and getting them to go against the assassins. Putting oh. the war on pause and going to kill all the assassins at Masyaf. Oh, okay. Because Masyaf is the home base of the assassins. And he's like, They'll, he'll never make that happen. They won't stop their war. And she's like, oh, they won't? Are you sure? You've yeah. been killing people on both sides of the war. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've killed their leaders. I mean, their friends, their generals, their people. Mm-hmm. You've been killing people on both sides of the war, a.k.a. making you guys a main enemy, a third guy in the war. Yeah. So I think they're pretty much inclined to kill all of you guys just for a bit and then go back to their war. Yeah. And Robert is on his way to talk to King Richard and to the Sultan to get them to stop the war and go kill all the assassins. Okay. A trump card. <laughs> yeah. And then Altair is like, fine, I'll catch up to him and stop him. Okay. So Robert's new plan. <laughs> oh, what you just explained? <laughs> yep. I just So it happens? It. It, no. Altair goes to the Templar or the, the Templars technically or the Christian camp mm-hmm. and finds Robert there right here if you can see him talking to king richard the guy in red uh-huh and king's richard like well it seems like you both have very compelling stories i can't decide this so i will put this in the hands of the lord by making you guys fight whoever wins is right <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> yeah that's that's king richard yeah, for you yep, yep. <laughs> so you guys fight and then you kill him I oh he oh he makes you fight the assassin yeah like robert the sob and the assassin fight Okay. While Robert sometimes gets back up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's a boss fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's when he... Re- okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's when he reveals that there's a 10th guy. Oh, my gosh. Because guess what? These nine... <laughs> Intern's face is like, how the fuck does this go on for? <laughs> guys, guys, hear me out. There's nine... The thing you realize, he explains it to you. He's like, you've been a puppet this whole time. Do you not realize oh. that the nine guys you killed, including me, all knew about the treasure? The apple? Uh-huh. Well, there was a tenth guy who knew about the treasure. Okay. Who the is The one it? who sent you on the mission. <gasps> Alma Lim You're... is the tenth guy. Oh, my. So, he's a Templar? Wait. Yeah. He's a Templar? And an assassin. <gasps> or Wait. This is, this to, is like. To be more clear. To be more clear. So, it makes sense. He was a Templar. They found the treasure, and then he separated it because he didn't want to share it. Oh. <laughs> and he became the assassin? He became the assassin's mentor. Dude, this is Star Wars. <laughs> this is like, what's his Except name? Except you're playing a Sith. <laughs> I know, but this is like. 
Mexican novel. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> no, but this is like <laughs> Professor Palpatine right here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. He literally was Professor Palpatine. <laughs> yeah. But in yeah. their own way. So basically, he's been sending you around to kill anyone who knows about this treasure so he can keep it himself. Oh, and my God. With this reveal, you go back home to Masyaf. Uh-huh. And he won't let you in. He, because you're the last guy. You get back and you talk to this random villager, and this villager is like, I am just a basket weaver continuously working. He's controlling him with the apple. The apple lets you control people. Oh, yeah. Wow. So he can basically control his whole city and all the assassins through that apple. Wow. That's insane. And you get back up from like a guy because in the other cities, there's boroughs, not boroughs, sorry, bureaus uh-huh. where you assassins go to get information. Mm-hmm. One of those guys comes and helps you get into the city. OK. OK. And then you have to back to the present. <laughs> I like how it's a boob shot. <laughs> no, she's sending you a hand signal. Oh, <gasps> the wait. Now, why? Assassins about the hidden blade, which is their main weapon. Mm-hmm. Is that blade that comes out of their wrists, like mm-hmm. Spider-Man's webs? Uh huh. Yeah. To use it, you have to cut off your ring finger. But why? So, uh, uh our character's name Altair, right? Yes. He doesn't he have a ring. finger. He hasn't finger. done that. He's done that. He doesn't oh, he have has? a ring finger. Okay. But why? Why is she? What is she doing? She's an assassin. <gasps> That's oh! That's a signal. Oh my god! It's okay. It's a signal that she's an assassin. No wonder you said you boot know, thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And everyone's like, oh, we're just looking at her boobs. No, she's sending you the signal that she's an assassin, too. Okay. But, like, what ha- what is happening in this moment? In this moment, you get out of the Amnimus, and you just hear in the background, like, this radio transmission. Like, uh-huh. people are talking over a radio, and all you hear is gunshots. Oh. And the Warren's like, I don't know how you did it, Miles. I don't know how you did it. But this is what you've caused, because the assassins are here to get you out. <laughs> Oh shit! And then he's and then he's talking like a, a security guy. He's like, "Do I need to get the subject out of here, or can you contain this?" He's like, "I got it. Just you know, mm-hmm. just speed it up a little bit because yeah. they're not that many, but you know, they're assassins." <laughs> yeah. And then she gives you that signal of like, "Hey, I'm also an assassin, but I'm not gonna do shit yet." <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh. She what? threw up her her gang sign. <laughs> Christian Bell. <laughs> but yeah, the assassins are coming to save you. But they're not doing so well. <laughs> yeah. They're like trying to come in through the front Is door. Is it Rebecca and Sean? No. Oh. They're not field agents yet. But Rebecca and Sean are assassins. Yeah. Just oh. not in, you, you don't meet them in this game. In the present time. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. But you don't meet them in this game. That's yeah, in Assassin's yeah. Creed 2. Okay. Okay. But Lucy gives you that hand signal and then you're told, just go to your room. We we can't continue for today. Okay. JK. You're back in the. T- you're you jump back in the animus and you're fighting Alma Lim and you're wondering. This is so. Why much. is Altair standing like that and glowing? It's the apple's powers. Alma Lim is using the apple to fight you. He's holding it. It's behind the A. Oh, okay, okay. Well, uh, no, but it looks like we're glowing. Yeah, we're glowing because he's using the apple to hold us. Oh, I thought you said we were using the apple's no, powers. No, he is. Yeah, yeah, okay. Now. The thing about the apple is, yeah, it also does illusions, but it can also make, it also has, it's a very powerful weapon built to control people. Mm-hmm. And you're wondering who, will need, how would someone build that to control other people? Because yeah. we know who builds it. I don't know if it's in this game or the next game. Okay. He also does, and his boss fight's a bit tricky because he makes copies of himself. Oh, yeah. With the apple. Uh-huh. And you like strike one, it's gone, but you know, they still have life. So it's like a pain in the ass to fight him a little bit. Oh, okay. But you beat him, you kill him. And he says, no, the power was mine. It was supposed to be mine. He's being very greedy about his power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to build this new world. You've ruined it. <laughs> you should have died. Yeah. And then you touch the apple. Uh-huh. Altair touches the apple. Okay. What's up? What's going on with your nail, bro? Sorry, sorry. No, I'm listening. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He touches the apple and it gives him a map okay. of modern day Earth. <gasps> okay. So now this thing knows futures. <laughs> yeah, y'all don't know shit. Don't worry about who's walking up. They're other well, assassins. Okay. Um, it shows them a modern day map of the world mm-hmm. with points in certain sections of the world. Oh, it okay. turns out, and this is explained back in the pre- present. In the present, mm-hmm. they're precursor sites. Precursor? What does that mean? I can't explain. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Not to the next game. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I still have to prepare the presentation for the next <laughs> game. <laughs> Wait, so they're called precursor sites. Precursor, so areas where there could be more 
uh, history of more pieces of Eden, oh. more technology. Because the piece of Eden, they don't have uh, the uh, uh, Templars don't have it. No one has it. Neither in the in the modern day. In the modern day, no one has it. Oh, okay. It's oh. in the temple somewhere, and they oh. think that with the map they can find the temple, and that's okay. all they wanted to find from Desmond. The okay. Map. Uh huh. So they're like, and then Warren like you get you jump back out of the Animus and he's like all right we got what we needed you die and then Lucy's like no 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 we don't die he doesn't die yet and he's like why well what if we need him to get into the temples yeah because of something special Desmond handled apparently not uh. explained yet <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> and then mm-hmm. when after that you get off the Animus you you go back to your room and then suddenly you get a headache and then suddenly your vision goes like x-ray vision or eagle vision uh-huh. and you see this on the wall what the what all this is gibberish by the way <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you're wondering how did it get here who left it here yeah it was left by subject 16 it was the guy <laughs> the intern who that <laughs> it was the guy doing the animus before you oh yeah you're subject 17 oh <gasps> It's a whole experiment to find the Eden treasures, the piece of wow. the pieces of Eden, because there's more than just the apple. <laughs> but this this is a this is a like hallucination. No, it's like it's ego vision is the ability to see what no one else can see. No, but where does he see it? Like in his room. Oh, okay, okay. Written in blood. Wow. <laughs> but All it's right. been take. It's been like wiped off. But there's like Asian writing. Yeah, Asian English symbols, Greek symbols. This weird circle thing in the middle. Yeah. Wow, and okay. here's the thing. The reason why Lucy doesn't want you so much in the Animus is because Subject 16 went insane. Yeah. And it's because the oh, the bleeding effect made him go into a coma where his memories were shifting with his ancestors' memories. He didn't know what was real, what was his, what wasn't his. That no. type of deal. He ended up dying because they pushed him too far. And now Desmond is getting the ability of eagle vision. Wow, okay. Is that the ending? Yes. <laughs> That's the end. <laughs> Why do you switch to the next scene? <laughs> that is the ending of the game. Oh, okay, okay. Now, I'm willing to explain some things to you guys. Okay. For example, what are precursors? Okay. They're the ones who came before. So remember at the start of the presentation, I told you about the sol- sun's solar flares burning the s- burning planet? Yeah. They're the ones before the time now. Oh, yeah, those weird people that... Those that people. are shiny and can somehow still understand the world to this day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were so advanced, and technically, in this example, they're the Greek gods, like Juno, Minerva. Yeah. I think Zeus, but I don't think we ever get his name. Mm-hmm. The point is, the gods from before are called precursors, and but- they're more like powerful than humans. In fact, they made humans as a slave... That's a slave thing. But like when you say the map shows precursors, it shows them Precursor in the roof? Precursor sites. Like where they've so been. So like tombs s- of these guys. Oh, okay. And then in, in the next game, I think, or the, yeah, in the next game, you see one of these sites and how it looks and such. Oh, okay, okay. But the point is, guys, precursors are godlike beings that made humans for enslavement, for enslaves. Wow. Yes. And the piece of Eden is a literal thing that they used to control people. Oh. Now, why some people can use it is unexplained yet. And how it affects people when they use it is unexplained yet. That's in the next game. So they were the ones that made. They made the pieces <laughs> of Eden. They oh, made humans. Okay. They made these temples. Uh-huh. And they didn't survive their solar flare. All that was left was humans. Oh, all right. That's okay. right. We cockroaches. <laughs> but... <laughs> Now, baking, bringing back to the first slide I put, it said, theme matters. Mm-hmm. And you're like, well, what's Assassin's Creed's first theme? Redemption. Yeah. Altair goes from an arrogant, very self-obsessed, very, like, reckless killer yeah. to a guy who wants to free people, wants to help and save people, mm-hmm. and isn't just being a dickhead about it. He's yeah. nicer. He's kinder to his lower ranking people or the people that are similar rank. Like Lightning McQueen. Like Lightning McQueen. <laughs> <laughs> he is Lightning McQueen. Yeah. And he saves the assassins and the Templars. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. And that is Assassin's Creed 1. Awesome. You, I See, I remember watching this game, the gameplay, but like 
I couldn't really grasp the story sometimes. That's it's a, it's it's the best way in my opinion to introduce what this what this world is gonna be. Yeah, you get both the sides of the, the Templars why they do what they do, why they're not the greatest of people, but not the worst of people. Yeah, and then you get the si- assassin side, and then you see what happens when people get corrupted by wanting to have power. Yeah, now, but I feel like you explained it well. I did, but guess what? Altair's story is not done. Oh, of course. We go back to Altair's story in the fourth game oh assassin's creed revelations okay that came out and that one is three game two games away <laughs> two oh okay. so we have to go next presentation will be assassin's creed 2 then brotherhood i might okay. actually do those i might present those both next week maybe if we have time yeah or if i can get the presentations ready yeah and then assassin's creed Revelations. all right after assassin's creed assassin's creed 3 after that it's going to get a little more complicated. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. And that's it. That's it. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, how do we do on time? <laughs> we did 45 minutes. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, you explained it so well. I remember watching the gameplay. This was years ago, but I could have not told you everything <laughs> that I watched, but you explained it so well. All right. Any questions, intern? Um, so are Rebecca and Sean in the next in the second next, one? Yeah, in the next one. I'm replaying the second one. Wait, what happened to um, Christian Bell? Christian Bell. The actress for Christian. Christian Bell. The the one the Lucy. One. Yeah, what happened to Lucy? They're still around. Okay. Last thing that we see in the game is that the oh, image of the walls, okay. the blood like, images. You're you're in this in the first. But game. she's fine. She's not been caught. They don't know. No, but in the first game, you're still the this game ended with you still being at in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. All right. In the next game, we figure out what happened. Okay. See, it's just not the same. I can see why now you say it's not the same anymore with Assassin's Creed. Yep. And then in, in my personal favorite, Assassin's Creed 2, which I consider the best game of all. Mm-hmm. It's in Italy during the Renaissance period. Yeah. And it's in like five different maps. So this one had like four. Wow. Next one had um, technically five Florence. The, um, what's that one city in Italy that's like a huge canal? Venice. Venice. Um, Monterey Joni. I don't know if that's an actual city. I think it is. Monterey. I've never heard that name. <laughs> it's a okay. So I don't think it's a real one. It's just an in-game <laughs> one. Rome. Wow. And it takes place like uh, I'll have years down, but yeah, yeah. But it, it's like a it good. Are, it's like a good decade you play. Is there more drama as oh, good as this so one? So much drama. Okay. Oh my God, Altair was like a blank slate. If we're being honest, uh huh. He was just he had his emotions, yes, but the next guy. Is the best guy. He Ezio is the only character in Assassin's Creed who got three full games. Wow. Okay. Just on his story, except Desmond, who got four games, but he it was never about him. It was about his ancestors. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, next up, Ezio Aditori da Firenze. Oh. Yeah, I can say that because he's my favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And well. Ezio's story technically is a short film, three video games, and then another short film. Wow. All right. I might well, actually do his whole story in one presentation. Maybe I can fit it all. You cannot do three games in one presentation. Yeah, I can't actually. Yeah, calm down. <laughs> I See, can probably do two. No, you don't. Just no, I mean like the short film. No, but and then the the ma- the second game, Brotherhood, and then Re- Revelations and the short film. That's five things. No, I mean two for one presentation, uh, one main presentation, <laughs> and then two for the last one. Yeah, but. I feel like presenting one game at a time really helps you, like us understand. No, it. no, I mean like I'm just adding a short film. Okay, okay. But, but yeah, that's been Assassin's Creed. Remember, theme matters. Yep, it matters. I'm hoping new this message gets out to the Assassin's Creed Mirage team, so they mm-hmm. put it's in too, a theme. It's too late at this point. You better figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. That's thank been you for Fries. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you for listening. Bye bye.